Hi everyone, again welcome to this um, lecture um, on the Linux programming and scripting, I hope you are enjoying the class uh, so far, um, last week we started with the Perl programming this is when uh, the course is uh, getting serious uh, in terms of the programming itself. Um, so today we will be continuing the Linux uh, um, uh, this course on uh, Linux programming, uh, focusing on the Perl. Um, last week we introduced uh, the basic commands. Actually, we saw how to actually uh, get data from the terminal or from external input, and uh, then how we can actually um, manipulate that. Uh, um, input and then produce an output which is like hello world program um, and it also gives the user name that is what we saw and then uh, we also saw the basic data types uh, the scalar data type the arrays and then the associative arrays um, today we will continue that um, with looking at some more the data uh, types um, one of the special types of array called string and then we look at that and then we will also like start some uh, some of the operations um, using uh, these data structures and how we can build programs so um, we will build it uh, little by little so let us look at some of the string so string is essentially like I mean it is again an array of uh, characters uh, but together they have a special meaning which is uh, they are treated as a single variable. Um, so there is a concept of a matching which is essentially what it means is whether the two strings are exactly the same. Um, so like I mean in, in equality of numbers is fairly easy where you can say like um, 2 plus 3 equal to 5 and 5 on one hand and then 2 and 3 on the other hand if you do a um, addition operation they are equal that we can establish. But in a string, how can you establish like whether a string is equal to another particular string? So it's mainly it's what we call as the comparison or the matching, and um, essentially the matching is uh, achieved through this um, uh, double um, slashes, uh, as you can see here. Basically, it's uh, slash string slash. There are a couple of uh, mnemonics here. One is um, this. Um, um, this dollar underscore uh, it actually has a special meaning this one here which uh, shows here um, the dollar underscore refers to the current line so it's the current line or um, essentially the current uh, um, value basically as to where it is. So here you can see basically like I mean dollar underscore is directly refers to what is the standard in essentially like I mean so um, again this particular statement you can see that it is a compound statement it basically gets this value into dollar underscore and then uh, it also does the chop uh, function on it. Um, one thing is basically uh, this dollar underscore and the this some of these variables you do not really need to specify actually like okay I am going to operate on that Perl kind of implicitly assumes that if you do not specify anything you are referring to dollar underscore. So that is again uh, another reason why like I mean in this statement we do not specify dollar underscore equal to or something uh, again pay attention to the, the two slashes and the string so in order to match this particular any string with the dollar underscore we just simply use uh, the string in the middle of uh, two slashes. So here um, so the, the thing is basically if the result is true I mean then um, essentially like I mean that, that path is taken uh, if you are using like an if statement. Um, and again like I mean you can use this. Uh, essentially like I mean um, if the string appears anywhere in that particular line in anywhere in the line again so the dollar underscore denotes the line and this particular string if it happens to be there anywhere within that line then 
the result is becomes true uh, when you do the just the slash string slash. So um, in this example, actually, so here um, um, people with um, the Sierra Academy dot com um, uh, in as a URL essentially. Like I mean, so you can specify like I mean anything basically here, um, like MS students or um, electrical engineering students dot Sierra Academy dot com. But as long as soon as finds out that Sierra Academy dot com is there in that particular um, uh, as a substring of this particular string then the result becomes yes so um, and then if you give any other one of course the result is no and so the else path will be taken. So this is a simple uh, matching uh, function so uh, as we see basically like we are slowly becoming more and more now like okay we have some data structures how we can um, do programming with this data structure this will be the, the discussions that we will go forward with um, and then we will see like how we can manipulate the data itself using various um, commands. Um, so um, regular expression is the other uh, thing that we will be talking about. Actually, this just introduces the regular expression, but um, we will go into more details uh, later on. So, in general, so we saw that basically, like if it is a dollar underscore here, then we use just the slash slash. But in, in general, like I mean, uh, the variable may not be just the dollar underscore. You will be actually using other variables to do like string matching. So, in order to do those string matching, um, essentially we use this tilde. Uh, tilde after the the equal to, and so equal to tilde means like okay now match, and then uh, we we then build the string and then we can match again. Um, here you can see that actually uh, I'm also like putting a dollar at the very end. This dollar indicates that that is the end of the line. So or end of the line or end of the variable is where the dollar is. Uh, look at the previous one actually um, uh, here um, we do a chop all as well basically like that chop actually chops anything white characters after the um, white characters between the non white space and the dollar variable you can think of it that way. So in, in this case like I mean we are doing the chop again here um, on the dollar URL. So first we are assigning the standard in to the dollar URL that is the variable and then we perform a chop so it, it removes all the white space characters. So all you are left with is a non white space character followed by a dollar. So that is why like now when we do a um, matching essentially which is now um, right here. With this uh, tilde, that's the one that is used for matching. Now um, we can match it, and then basically, like um, this dollar essentially anchors that particular string at the end of uh, the variable. So it looks for this particular thing um, at the end of the variable. So can anyone tell me, like, um, what is for the beginning of the the, the variable? Um, so to go to the beginning or basically like uh, match from the beginning of the variable we use a caret basically the caret is essentially uh, in your keyboard you can uh, look at as the shift uh, 6 essentially that is the caret. So um, we use that for anchoring the beginning of the, the, the variable. And the dollar is used to anchor the end of the variable. So um, essentially, um, the regular expression itself we haven't uh, really introduced in this section. Um, but now we will we'll talk about the regular expression because the regular expression is one of the key things in Perl, which enables it to actually um, be used by many, many, many uh, uh, script writers.
So here um, the dollar name is uh, matched with John. Can can anyone tell me like uh, where this John usually comes? So as you can see, basically since the carrot is used, actually that the variable is anchored at the beginning. So this John has to be the first four characters the, of the um, string in order to match. Now we follow it basically with a slash b um, or backslash b, which is essentially like denotes a blank character um, or a white space. And in this one, actually, it's kind of different. Uh, basically, we now say that um, it's uh, John and then slash i. Um, the i actually um, you know, gives us essentially like I mean, uh, um, that is, um, uh, we don't have to match the exact case. So, uppercase John, lowercase John, both can become. Um, True in this case, so so that that's another uh, unique thing about uh, Perl. Um, now here there is. Uh, even longer um, thing basically. So here, if you notice, actually there are um, there are two um, slashes, or actually three slashes: one here, one here, one here, and then there is also this S. So um, this is basically like I mean where uh, we now start uh, substituting a string with another string. Um, in this example, the string HTTP is substituted with uh, the other string, um, the FTP. So um, essentially, like I mean, you can think of this as like I mean from uh, the Beginning basically, like I mean, if there is an um, um, uh, HTTP, then we replace that with um, the variable, the 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 string FTP, and again, this is. Uh, um, So this particular command is in fact used very widely like I mean Perl that uh, this kind of uh, string matching and then basically like replacement uh, of the strings. Um, So this is another example. Um, Okay, so um, as I was explaining, um, so we can use like the various um, matching. Uh, so a simple matching is uh, from here, where um, 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 the string is matched against, uh, or the dollar name is matched against the string John. Uh, 
one thing that I want to highlight is here basically you can see that actually it's matched uh, with um, the, the beginning at the beginning of the, the, the string. So the column name variable is matched from the beginning so you can think of this as like its anchoring point. So it anchors either in the beginning or at the end. The beginning anchor is this uh, carrot and um, as we saw in the previous one the ending anchor or the towards the end how we do it is uh, with the, um, the dollar the dollar sign at the end. So, um, so this is the simple matching basically where um, it just uh, um, sees whether this uh, is the same or not. So you can use this matching inside uh, conditional statements to see whether um, we are getting the right value or not. Now the next one is uh, with the backslash b. Um, again, this is uh, backslash b is uh, a character that is used to match a blank character. So the John followed by blank is what uh, is matched um, at this point. The next one um, is uh, slash i. This is essentially like I mean, as I mentioned, like I mean, this makes it like case insensitive. In this case, actually, um, um, the, even the j will, the case of the j will also be ignored. So this will match um, 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 either. Um, like lowercase John, like this. It, it, it will also match uh, J and then uppercase O H N, whichever one. If the case is case doesn't matter, it just matches uh, this, this, uh, this this set of characters. Uh, doesn't uh, have to be like either uppercase or lowercase. Then the next one is um, essentially like I mean this is uh, we saw basically this is uh, where we are uh, replacing the character um, the HTTP with FTP and whether it's uppercase HTTP lowercase HTTP it doesn't matter because of this um, I that is at the end basically then um, we do that um, uh, directly. And one more, let us look at this one. This is also like a replacement. Uh, can anyone tell me like what is uh, being replaced? Uh, so, if you look at the difference between this and this, we, we call it like TR, and um, this side it is um, essentially um, uh, it is S. The S is essentially for a string replacement. So, um, the string replacement essentially may, um, um, means that like um, we just um, replace exactly the same string with another string. In this case the TR stands for the transliteration, transliteration um, operator um, and TR essentially um, changes the case in, the, in this example actually all the uppercase will be converted into a lowercase so so in that in so it, it takes the dollar name so it, it here actually like I mean it, it is um, basically it uh, takes the dollar name and wherever HTTP is found it replaces with HTTP in this case all the characters are um, used in this um, translation and then uh, in this the way that translation works is it takes the uppercase ones and then convert them into lowercase. So if there is already some lowercase it leaves it as is but if there is any uppercase that gets uh, to become a lowercase. So um, these are some of the examples of uh, how we do string matching and uh, kind of uh, we are beginning to now talk about regular expressions which is essentially like I mean um, um, a way to represent um, strings 
uh, which then becomes easier for get being operated on. So that is the way like I mean you can look at it essentially um, and the the end character is also like not just uh, so we, we introduced this I uh, there are other characters that we can use at the end um, for example we can use uh, G um, so here instead of I we can use G G is essentially it is uh, matching globally. So this probably matches only the, the first uh, occurrence but if you put a G then it matches all the occurrence of John in this particular uh, variable. Um, and then we can also uh, do string matching or matching against multiple lines which is uh, by using M as a character. Um, And then there are a few more uh, characters which uh, we will study in the in the in, in the future lectures. Um, but they are like a little bit more complicated. And then a uh, couple of things that we haven't uh, really understood uh, yet is now we know exactly how to match the exact string and how to replace uh, some of the strings and also like some of the characters. Um, there are some shorthand notation for various. Um, um, uh, these functions or these um, uh, patterns um, for example the D represents uh, or backslash D this will represent uh, a digit basically which is like anything between 1 or actually like 0 and 9. So a shorthand notation for this is the slash D that is one character and then if you add up plus this becomes like one or more characters if you put a star instead of a plus then that becomes um, zero or more of that characters. So these are some of the nifty things that we can use for um, uh, evaluating and then there is also like a con the um, W which is um, essentially a backslash W is so um, um, a, a letter essentially like I mean which is uh, from A to Z. So and then uh, we also have uh, there are two of them two different characters one is um, slash backslash S the lowercase s and then the other one is backslash uppercase s. The lowercase s signifies a uh, space character. Um, it is similar to like this uh, backslash p, which is essentially like I mean used for um, denoting white space between two words. Uh, and then you can have multiple white space by just adding the plus sign. And then the uppercase s is a non-white space character, which could be the same thing basically like zero to nine or a to z. Then uh, the uppercase A to Z also that is also possible and any other special characters they are all included in the the, uh, the uppercase S. So um, with these kind of uh, usage actually like now we can build uh, like I mean we can match exactly like uh, some some specific things inside this inside a string or inside a line and then uh, we can actually uh, use that information um, in processing that data. So I, I think like I mean um, uh, this is all like probably it is a um, little bit more than uh, what we wanted to uh, look at at the beginning of the lectures but uh, I think like I mean it will be it will become more and more clear as we go along because um, these are the things that we will use to match and uh, find the various things essentially. So now let us look at uh, a function definition. Um, we actually used a function in the previous uh, examples, uh, the chop is a function, it is a subroutine. Um, we 
even though the definition of that is included as part of the Perl standard library, but uh, the way the function defined is uh, using this uh, SUB. Okay, now let's look at uh, the functions essentially. So, so um, we actually saw a function um, previously, which is um, the chop itself. Actually, that's more like a library-based function. So, it's like a standard function provided by the Perl itself. Uh, in general, the function definition um, starts with um, the keyword sub. So here you can see the sub, and then the function name itself, which is here it's the print header. Um, we can have like some arguments. Uh, here there are no arguments. If there are arguments, we will give that within the the, the parenthesis. And then we start this uh, the, the bracket, and then um, we just specify what exactly is the content of this particular function. So here. The content is actually like use print, and then um, we just say basically what is the content type, um, uh, whether it's a text or HTML, um, and then um, followed by I think like this one you are familiar with now, which is the new line character. So it um, prints a couple of new lines. Um, so essentially, like I mean, this is uh, this may be a uh, Print header header information on an on an HTML page. If you want to print something out, uh, then it, it, it this particular subroutine actually prints that thing and then uh, prepares it for the subsequent content to be printed out. And then the call is essentially uh, we just say print header uh, with um, either this. Uh, um, the two parentheses, the parentheses, or simply just print header. So um, we will be dealing with some of these uh, these functions and function definitions and function calls in the later section because uh, the program is itself is uh, not uh, fully done if you don't have these things. Uh, by the way, um, we already talked about it in the first class that uh, in Perl there are no like the, there is no main routine which actually will be executed first here um, basically it just works from top down uh, so the function calls could be anywhere and uh, you can call that anytime basically so the other way to specify a function is to specify this uh, particular uh, command called require uh, this is essentially like I mean uh, that these are functions that are already predefined and kept in the library. So when when we specify this require as a beginning at the beginning of the, the full uh, script, then this particular um, um, uh, function will be incorporated within your uh, program or it will be called so that whenever you use this um, the function call. Oh, one thing I forgot to mention in the previous one is. When we call the, the the whatever the function calls, we also use this um, ampersand at the beginning. Um, ampersand in general, you can think of it as like an address or whatever. So um, the ampersand print header is essentially like I mean the main thing how to call a particular function. So here again for the C time, we just call with um, this ampersand C time. Um, and then here the argument is time, uh, and then uh, it prints out um, one of the, the the output uh, essentially. So this one you can you can actually like go to the Perl library and actually um, look for C time and see what it does. So now um, let's come to uh, how do we open a file. Uh, the opening of a file is um, achieved through this command open um, and then um, there are two arguments to that um, here you can see that basically so this is straightforward which is the file name uh, 
and what this is called is uh, file handle. You can think of this as the address of that particular file. So file name, the name itself doesn't mean anything. Um, but once we start, um, so the the name is associated with just this file handle, and then after opening the file, we always refer to it with its file handle. Um, so here, essentially, the the file handle is um, using this. Uh, the log essentially and then basically like we do this uh, greater than and less than so now can anyone tell me um, um, the um, how do we read input from the terminal um, essentially now as you you must have uh, seen and basically as we learned in the very very beginning of the this course all the um, utilities, all the resources in the in the Unix system or the Linux system is all represented as files. So even the terminal is also a file, and that file name is this uh, HDIN. So that's why the, they are standardized, uh, defined, well predefined uh, file handles: the HDD in, HDD out, HDD error, and then there is also like some arg um, ones, essentially arg v and arg c. Uh, we will learn about that, but think of it this way, right? Um, the std in, std out, they're all like files that gets written out or uh, read in, um, and then we use uh, the same file handles to read uh, various uh, variables or read into various variables and basically write out. So it's it's very similar to the same uh, log, and in in this case, actually, we are just opening a. a a custom file with a custom file handle whereas std in std out std err they are all like predefined and they are given to you already so a typical construct is uh, this construct which is like while and then uh, this end so in in this uh, perl program essentially like i mean want to open a file for every line so when we specify that while and then uh, this greater than less than log this gets line by line so the first line um, will be there and then we can process that first line and then since this is a while loop it goes and processes uh, the next line it reads one line at a time from this particular file so uh, here the the, the the thing is like I mean it just gets the access dot log and then basically it just, um, prints out access log and dollar underscore here the dollar underscore directly is equal to um, this uh, log so it's uh, typically you can think of this assignment is like this basically equal to So you can this is the same you can replace it here so um, while and then basically like this and then uh, then do this yeah, same thing um, so the dollar underscore is a special character as I mentioned earlier um, this is denoted to the current line or current um, variable whatever is there in the system um, there are similar um, 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 dollar variables they are called dollar variables um, we will be actually learning some of them actually because um, they are also like very crucial and uh, in fact you can manipulate uh, things with these kind of uh, using the dollar variables for example um, how do we read a particular uh, file so that so here like I mean one thing you notice is actually uh, when we do this um, um, this while loop always it gets one line at a time how do we change um, or can we do something to change this to read multiple lines and use something else as a delimiter so a delimiter is essentially like I mean that is how it reads essentially it knows that the end of line is uh, basically the dollar or essentially the end of line character so it reads up to the end of line so now 
say like i mean we want to read uh, like uh, any like multiple lines but uh, on a semicolon the the semicolon can come maybe we are maybe on a period basically we want to get one sentence at a time from a text file how do you do that um and then these uh, the sentences can be like uh, spanning multiple lines the only delimiter on the sentences is the the period so think about that um in fact that may be one of the exercises that we will um, ask you to do uh, at some point um there are ways to do it actually like to change the delimiter from the dollar uh, to something else and how do we do it um, we'll talk about it uh, soon so now for writing to a file um essentially we use the redirect um um oh, arrow essentially which is the greater than so um, we open the file but uh, if we use this one in front of the file name then it knows that okay this file handle like you know, actually it's um, it's going to be a write file essentially um so in the previous one this was like a read only file we are reading it from the access.log but now the write file is essentially it's a my file.txt and then um, essentially um, whenever we use the whenever we want to write something to the file we also add the 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 file handle to the command so if you do just print and then welcome um so that does not print it into the file but if you do print with this file handle my file and then welcome now this welcome um will go into this more form so one question i have is uh, if you do just print and welcome what does it do does it write to some uh, some place or how how, how does uh, perl react so the short answer is essentially uh, as you know everything is a file so when you say like print basically without any argument it assumes that that is what you are asking it to do is to write it into the standard out so it uses the standard out as the um, the file handle and then just writes out uh, as the output um and then uh, finally uh, we have this uh, particular statement uh, the close um and then the close statement essentially like uh, closes the file um usually like when the perl program finishes uh, running uh, the operating system goes and actually closes all the file that got open uh, during the operation um but uh, it is a good idea to actually close the file yourself because sometimes um, uh, you may be using like multiple files multiple times you may have to read and write the files um so you will miss out as to whether you really close or not and for closing any file um we have to give it the the correct um, file handle uh here the my file is the file handle which uh, we need to specify in order to close the file so we will come to some of the other um, um interesting ways to manipulate the data um uh, later on um so now let's look at the data types and basically uh, like or how how do we operate on some of this uh, data so number one is this uh, scalar data we already saw the scalar variable but now the data is essentially like these are it can be numbers or string of characters so any particular string is also a scalar string and one thing to note is essentially like as i mentioned earlier uh, perl is not a strongly typed uh, language and there are no integer values internal to perl all the numbers are stored as uh, double position floating point numbers um so again this is one key difference so that um, you can operate uh, uh, integer with a floating point number and the uh, perl will uh, accept it and then produce a produce a result um there are some rules that you need to follow uh, which um, i will explain uh, as we go along um 
and then the other one is basically the, uh, the the literals or the constants are the way the data is represented in the source code. Uh, so all the floating point literals in C are legal in Perl. So these are the things that you want to keep in mind. Um, so what are floating point literals? Uh, some of these examples are one point two three four, one point two three. E to the power 45 or minus 6.5 or minus 6.54 e to the power 3 or minus 12 e to the power 34 these are all floating point virtuals. The integers are essentially like what is shown here um, SF could be an integer uh, up till 177 is actually an integer with value of 127 um, hexadecimal SF is uh, the same as uh, 255. So, um, um, for the string, uh, the examples basically there are no size limit. It can be from in, in anywhere from zero to infinity. Uh, there are two different types of um, uh, strings here in um, uh, Perl. One is the the single quoted string and the double quoted string. Um, so the single quote string that we already saw. Um, in the examples before um, essentially like I mean the, those are uh, uh, we, we used uh, some of those things basically like I mean, uh, um, in those examples um, uh, the double quoted strings are more uh, common essentially so um, The the difference here is like how, how much uh, we can uh, um, do the operations on. Um, In within a double, um, so the key difference between the the, the in, in the double quote string is that you can actually use um, um, variable names within the the double quote string, and it, the Perl can interpret that as a variable so that it re replaces that with the um, actual uh, variable uh, during the execution or when you're running the program. Whereas in a single quoted string, they're all just taken as a literal string. So essentially, like even if you put a dollar something, it's the same as uh, what it is. Um, um, so here, essentially, like I mean, so again, the double double quoted strings. Essentially, they are strings like exactly like in C. Uh, the you can use also to. Uh, you can use the backslash uh, characters for uh, escaping uh, the control characters um, uh, and uh, um, also like I mean they are, they are used as the control characters as well. So um, you can specify like I mean backslash and that is in, that's one of the things that we saw in earlier one basically backslash n represents a new line character um, and then number 7 in ASCII represents the bell sound. Um, hexadecimal X uh, seven um, actually like the F denotes that uh, basically and then that's uh, actually no sorry X denotes the hexadecimal and then uh, the seven F is the character that's for delete. And another example is this variable interpolation is uh, in double quotes. So. so um, and some of these uh, things that we saw basically are um, um, new line character uh, backslash n the return character or um, it is um, backslash r um, c x is essentially control x which is uh, very common in emacs uh, kind of, uh, editors um, backslash t is tab uh, then there is form speed uh, some of these things are we hardly use them uh, today 
but um, uh, I think like I mean th this is a complete uh, list of all the characters that we can uh, use essentially uh, how we can escape them. Um, So I will let you read some of these things um, at your um, leisure. Um, you can think of, uh, you can see basically, like I mean, uh, even like uh, the codes themselves can be uh, escaped, and uh, so it can print out the real ones. Essentially. So here are some examples: uh, a simple square string uh, with uh, double quotes. Just say hello. Um, which just prints the hello. Now don't. It prints just the don't with the single quote within. Uh, then hello world basically it prints hello world with the new line character. So it goes to the next line. Um, now a single quote. Uh, the single quote is also represented um, as a backslash quote. The backslash itself is represented as uh, the backslash backslash. Um, and then uh, the no other backslash characters uh, are allowed uh, essentially um, in inside the single quote strings. Uh, so you can only like uh, escape two things: one is the backslash itself or the quote itself. And then uh, the string should not cross the line boundary. And then there is no variable interpolation. So if you are using like dollar something dollar sentence, it just prints out as dollar sentence. It won't um, change that to what the, the equivalent uh, value is. Uh, so the dollar variables are just uh, represented as is. There is no interpolation on the variables. And I think like I mean this is probably the the, the biggest difference between a double quoted string and a single quoted string. In a single code, there is no variable interpolation, whereas in a double code, if you add a variable in the middle, they are interpolated and uh, expanded. The variable, the sub values are used to, um, when it is when you run the program. So some of the examples like the hello. So this is exactly the same as double coded hello. So there is no difference there. Don't or don't actually we need to escape the the quote, otherwise uh, the string will end at don't. So if we escape it, then it prints out properly. Don't. And then the hello world multiple lines essentially like I mean so it prints out with um, the new line that is added here. Um, and then new line itself is basically it's a, just a two character string. Essentially, it prints out exactly the same. So one question for you is uh, what does this mean basically um, to maybe like uh, um, more challenging what does this mean so dollar a equal to put will put backslash backslash n the column and then dollar b equal to a Uh, print dollar b so try this program and then see what uh, it generates we will talk about it uh, in the next class as to what exactly that we will see um, so I think uh, that is the end of uh, today's class, um, so we will see you uh, in the next one, so uh, just to recap essentially um, we started talking about uh, some string variables um, specifically string matching, how do we match uh, strings, 
and then uh, we also went through like um, how to um, uh, do some of the um, the matching itself like I mean how do we operate on the, the strings uh, we studied about a little bit about the regular expression uh, we have not really introduced in a big way um, I will try to do that in the next class as to uh, give you like more gory details about the regular expression and um, how can we uh, do matching on uh, really esoteric uh, um, items and uh, um, and you know like I mean the, the, the wherever you can find some regularity you can you should be able to use regular expression and then use a lot of matching um, and this this matching and this associative arrays are probably two main topics um, in Perl um, which is useful across uh, where you are and which company you work for everywhere you go they will all be using these two principles the associative arrays and the uh, regular expression matching um, so we saw that and then we also uh, now started talking about uh, the the strings as to what kind of uh, string that we can build what is the difference between a single quote and a double quote um, again the key difference there is the double quote uh, will do the uh, the variable enumeration or actually the um, it will extrapolate all the variables whereas uh, for a single quote it will not do those the, the, the variable interpolation. So um, I guess um, that is pretty much um, currently like I mean uh, what we have um, and then we will start talking about um, how we go about in the next class. Okay, uh, thank you very much.